Hi y'all. Uh, I'm going to do a video today on how to, uh, I work with stringers a lot. I like almost every piece. It just adds like a whole different <clears throat> uh, dimension and layering and just a lot of interest to just about every piece that I do. Um, so what I do is I take the stringers. So this is what you're going to need. <sighs> Sorry, this was an impromptu video and I'm, uh, okay, so this is a, a stringer and this, and I also do the same thing with noodles and I'll show you both. I'll also show you two different ways that most people, most people, okay, so let me just show you what I'm working towards here. So this is a couple stringers that I do and what I do is I take, let's see if I can get that close to you. I think you get the idea there, right? Um, I take the stringers and I pull them and I pull them in a way that they're just like real organic. They're not these straight, you know, super straight lines. This is, this is going to turn into these organic type of lines. Some will be thicker, some will be super, super thin. And they're just a lot of fun to work with and they add a lot to your piece. And then here's an example of a, a noodle. And so I'm really, I'm living the Southwest, sorry, where do I live? <laughs> I live in Southern Arizona, Southeastern Arizona actually. Um, and we have a lot of cactus and one of my favorite cactus is the Ocotillos. And so this, per, this particular technique lends itself well to doing Ocotillos. So, um, so let me, the camera down on what we're gonna do so some people actually do this using candles um, and I'm going to show you what you get when you do this with a candle some of the other things you're gonna need is I have over here I have a glass plate that I can put this hot glass when I'm done it's hot so you want to protect yourself and put it in a place that it can cool down that's fire safe not on a mat or your workbench, but on something, you know, stainless steel or glass or whatever. And I also use these little cheapo Harbor Freight pulling tools. Let's see. So it doesn't really matter, whatever you're comfortable working with, but you really should have two. One for each hand so you're not burning the little fingers, okay? You need a well, you don't need a candle, and I'm going to show you why you don't need a candle. But because what I use, I'll show you in a minute. What I use are these food warmers from the dollar store, literally a dollar, and they last me for quite a while. Um, and they're super clean, and they're easy to store, and they last quite a while. So, but. So some people like using the candle flame, so I thought I'd just show you what happens when you use a candle flame. So because this is so long, I'm just gonna use one tool, but if it was a shorter and I just wanted to keep going down the line, I would want to have two tools. But so just for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to, let me pull you in here just a little bit. This video is for Kristen, by the way. She asked me to do it. So I'm just gonna get that can't that stringer warm I'm gonna kind of turn it so it gets warm um, throughout and you can already see maybe you can't you see what that candle does that candle leaves black soot all over your glass now you're gonna you it may or may not burn off in the when you fuse your piece but who wants to take that chance, right? So <clears throat> you'd have to clean that to be to be sure that it's and and that's just not feasible. Once once we're done, you'll see why. So I'm gonna it's kind of clean. I'm gonna just gonna clean that off now. I don't like it. Done. Okay. So we're done with the candle. We've ruled out, we, we hate working with candles. I won't work with a candle. Um, I think I'd probably go to the 
gas stove before I work with a candle. I'm going to use this little food warmer. I'm going to fire it up. And again, you just want to make sure that you're, you know, you're not having stuff over that can catch on fire and that kind of thing. I know you guys know that. Okay, now for just for, I'll break the stringer. Now again, um, and I'll use two tools so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now I can hold this over. Now watch. <coughs> Excuse me. It's warming up, it's warming up, and there's no black soot. Oh, my camera just does not want to work. There's no black soot on that. Okay. I don't know. I can't get that thing focused, but... So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just kind of get that tip warm, and you'll know because it'll start glowing. Turn it over, and I don't think that this is the best. It's just too bad. Okay, let's leave my own kitchen back. Okay, see it's going. Now I'm going to take that other tool and I'm just going to start wiggling and pulling and thinning out that glass. And I'm just going to go down the line doing that. Now you have to think about where, where this is going. If this is going into a, a piece that's like um, abstract or whatever, you definitely want to have Wait, now see that broke. No big deal. I put this on my glass plate, which is behind here. Okay, so I keep my glass plate handy and I'm just going to pick it. And then, so in most cases, it's not going to matter that you have a break in it because. That's just the way it's going to be. So now I'm just going to like get it hot. And it takes a little practice. And just wiggle that thing around. See that end broke? So just put it in the plate and just keep on going. Now if you don't want it super thin, but you want to get that organic bends to it, you just Hold it into the flame and wiggle it around, but don't pull. And you just keep going down the line doing that. I like to have the thinness because it just adds a lot of interest. And I just pull it and I twist it and curl it and whatever. Sometimes I just sit and, and do this because I do, I use a lot and I use a lot of different colors and it just adds a lot. I just love it. See how I'm doing that? Okay, now that broke. See how that broke? Now I'm just going to throw that on the plate and let it cool. And you just keep, and it does take a little practice, so don't like, um, just keep going. I have a shoebox full of this stuff. So once it cools and I need to store it, I just store it in my little shoe box and right up to the very end there, I'm going to just pull that. See? Okay. Now let's do a noodle. So the noodles being a little thicker, I'm going to just do one handed here. You just, now for this, um, I have done, uh, strips of glass bigger than noodles but I wouldn't do it in this I would take you know those map those cans of map gas that you can get a big box I use those and I take it outside because you know it's a big flame so I just get this warm on one side and then I'm going to flip it over and you'll know because it'll start glowing red hope you can see this and then I'm just going to take my needle nose and I'm just going to start twisting and pulling and keeping it in that hot flame because they cool off quite quickly 
and if it gets too thin or if it wants to just move it through that flame so that broke that's no big deal move it through the flame so that the the glass can start heating up above where you're actually working and pulling and you'll see it um, has a quite a nice now these would be I I could use these for like acatillos in the foreground or you know whatever you can just I use them in flowers I think that's where Kristen saw it and you just work with it and that's it so if you have any questions leave some comments below let me know what what you think okay always always Cap that thing off. Don't walk away from your work, from your studio with the flame going. And I let it kind of smolder out, and then I just put the cap right back on it until the next firing. And then I leave it all right on my little, right on my little plate. I got my tools, I got my stringers, and I got my lighter and my can of gas. Okay. <gasps> See you later. Have a good time. Bye.